If you struggle with hypermobility, then this is the video for you because I'm about to show you two simple strategies that you can use to stabilize your joints and injury proof your body. Let's get into this. Joint hypermobility or joint laxity is actually a super common issue and it's not necessarily a problem. It's very commonly seen in children and many times these kids will grow out of their hypermobility as they get older. But in adults where joint hypermobility persists, it can be due to a genetic condition that causes a weakening or a looseness in the ligaments whose job it is to hold your joints together and to prevent them from moving through extreme ranges of motion. Hypermobility only really becomes a problem and steps into the realm of joint hypermobility syndrome when it's accompanied by other signs and symptoms. The most common symptom of this syndrome is of course pain in the joints and muscles, but you can also have clumsiness and balance problems. You can have feelings of dizziness and even bouts of fainting. You can have bowel and bladder issues, stiffness in your joints and muscles, and then there will very often be a history of injuries to connective tissue, things like sprains, strains, and dislocations. Thankfully, there's a straightforward test called the Biten score that can quickly provide a strong indication as to whether or not a person has joint hypermobility syndrome. The Biten score uses five simple joint motions to assess the regions of the body that are most commonly affected by hypermobility issues. Each individual joint motion is graded as either a zero if you cannot perform the motion or a one if you're able to perform the motion. Your total score is added up at the end and it's graded on a nine point scale. The test starts off in the upper extremity. You're going to take your pinky finger and bend it backwards as far as you can. If you can go beyond 90 degrees, that's a score of a one. If you cannot, it's a zero. You would then do the exact same thing on the other side. If you can go past 90 degrees, it's a one otherwise a zero. You then move on to the thumbs. Can you bend your thumb backwards to the point where it touches your forearm like I can? If you can, that's a one. Same thing on the other side. If you can get there, it's a one. If you can't, it's a zero. We then move on to the elbows. You're going to straighten the elbow as far as you can. If you can go past a straight line into elbow hyperextension, you get a one. If you cannot, it's a zero. Same thing on the other side. Give yourself either a one or a zero. You then move down to the knees. Straighten them as much as you can. If you can go past a straight line, then you get a one. If you cannot, it's a zero. And the final point comes from a forward bend. And if you can get your palms comfortably resting on the floor, you get a one. If you cannot get your palms to the floor when you go into that forward bend, you get a zero. Now, if you score four or more points on this test and you've had pain in four or more joints for a period of three months or longer, you may have joint hypermobility syndrome. Now we're going to go over some strategies that you can use if you've got joint hypermobility, but because this is such a broad based topic, I'm going to focus this video exclusively on hypermobility at the knee. Strategy number one is to use targeted strength training to build up and increase what's called the resting tone in the muscles surrounding those loose joints. And the idea here is simple. It's that if your ligaments aren't going to do the job of holding your joints together, well then we need the muscles in the area to be stronger and have a higher level of tension in them at all times so that they can step up and take a more active role in stabilizing your joints. One of my favorite exercises for building up the muscles on the back side of the leg that are responsible for reining in knee extension is a leg curl on an exercise ball. Now, obviously you're gonna need an exercise ball for this and a comfortable surface to lie on. Once you've got that, just go flat on your back and place your feet on top of the ball. Now, your feet should be positioned close to the center point in the middle of that ball, but you actually want about a four to six inch gap in between your feet and legs. That's gonna be very helpful for maintaining balance throughout this movement. From there, you want your head in a neutral position and resting comfortably on the floor. Arms should be positioned about 45 degrees off the sides of your body. Palms should be down and in contact with the ground. From there, you're gonna tense your glutes and your hamstrings and your core muscles, keeping your spine neutral as you elevate your hips up off the floor and bring your body into a straight line from your ankles all the way up to your shoulders. Now, if you've got hypermobility at your knees, you wanna pay special attention and make sure that you're maintaining just a slight bend in the knees and you're not falling into that hyperextension position. If that means pointing your toes a little bit, so be it. From there, you're gonna draw the ball in towards your rear end, maintaining a neutral hip position, and then 
you're going to very slowly allow the ball to drift out going about 20 or 30 degrees at the knee and then you're going to return to the starting position slow and controlled 20 or 30 degrees out and return we're focusing specifically on the upper end of the range of motion here building tension as far away as possible from that extension and hyperextension position, which is going to effectively create a shortening of that muscle in a neurological sense. So we just want to be focusing all of that tension in the upper part of the range of motion. Slow and controlled repetitions, making sure that you always have a good amount of bend in the knee. Now, if you find that that exercise is just too challenging for you using that setup, well, then I've got an option for you that's going to make it much, much easier. So go into the exact same starting position, feet up on top of the ball, head resting comfortably, arms out to 45 degrees off the sides of the body, palms down, engage your glutes, hamstrings, and core, bring yourself into a straight line. This time, when you draw the ball in, you can use a little bit of hip flexion. So instead of maintaining that perfectly neutral hip position that requires a ton of glute and low back strength, you can actually use your hip flexors as you draw that ball up. But you're still going to be using that short 20 to 30 degree range of motion and really targeting those calves and hamstring muscles drawing that ball in, focusing super slow on the way out and back in. As time goes on, try and engage the glutes more and get closer to that purely neutral position at the hips. But if you need to start out with a little bit of hip flexor assistance, that is just fine. What your goal is with this exercise is to build up strength and stamina. You want to work your way up to the point where you can perform 10 to 15 repetitions for two to three sets, two to three times per week. Strategy number two is a powerful taping technique that's going to ramp up body awareness while at the same time helping to reel you in a little bit as you approach your end range of motion. The only thing that you're going to need for this is a roll of rock tape and a pair of scissors. When taping for hypermobility at the knee, we're going to be using a single strip of rock tape and that tape is going to run from the center point in the belly of the hamstring muscle right about there down across the back of your knee and it's going to attach here to the upper portion of your calf. So. Take your roll of rock tape, measure from point A to point B, and cut your tape long enough to cover that distance. And then as always with rock tape, you want to go in after the strip has been cut and radius those corners. That's going to help make sure that the tape stays on longer and it doesn't peel off prematurely by catching an edge. And then with the application itself of rock tape, you want to make sure that it's going onto skin that is clean, dry, and free of all lotions, creams, and moisturizers. Once you've got that set, you're going to take your strip of tape, go down to the last two to three inches of tape, and you're going to tear through the backing of the tape and peel away that edge. Leave the rest of the backing on. That is important. Then you're going to find the center portion of that hamstring muscle right in the middle there, and you're going to aim that exposed tab of tape right dead center there. You're then going to take your tape backing and you're going to rub right over that little section, which is going to heat it up and activate the adhesive. Now this next part of the application is the most important part. You need to make sure that the knee is bent to about five or 10 degrees while the tape is going on. So, Zero degrees is there with the knee completely straight. For a person who hyperextends, you're actually going to be going beyond zero. So this is going to require some uh, attention to detail. So straight, five to 10 degrees of bend, that's your sweet spot. You're then going to go down and grab hold of the remaining backing of the tape. And you're going to begin peeling that away with one hand as you take the index and middle finger of the other hand. And you're going to apply about 20% stretch to the rock tape as you lay it down while moving down towards the calf. So just a very slight stretch on the tape. When I get down to those last two inches of tape, 
that part is going to go down with no stretch whatsoever. And then I'll take the backing and rub to activate the adhesive. Now, because that tape went on with the knee in a five to 10 degree bend, it means that every time I go to extend my knee, the tape is going to give me a very slight pulling sensation. It's going to increase my awareness as I approach end range, which can help to recalibrate your brain and reset what feels like the end point at the joint to you. Kinesiology tape is such an effective tool for these types of problems. And the reason for that is the sheer volume of stimulus that the tape can provide. See, it's on you 24 hours a day. So literally with every step that you take, your brain is getting biofeedback about this new position that we're trying to create. Now, obviously, if you've got joint hypermobility, you're going to want to wear the tape on the backs of both knees. And the good news is that a single application of rock tape can stay on for three to five days at a time. Rock tape is the only brand of kinesiology tape that I recommend. And if you need to pick up some rock tape, you can click the link in the upper right hand corner of your screen. I'll also put a link for it in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not hypermobile, but there's another pain, posture, or rehab related topic that you'd like to see a video about, leave me a suggestion in the comment section down below. I check those every single week. That's all for this week. Make sure to hit that subscribe button before you head out of here and I'll see you next time.